All right, I want to redo this video on the flow of ions at resting potential. I realized um, from one of my viewers that, that I really muffed this thing up at the end. So I just want to go back over and I want to do it properly this time. So the flow of ions at resting potential, okay? So we want to know which way these ions are flowing at resting potential, okay? So the membrane is permeable to ions other than um, potassium, so mainly sodium and chloride. And originally it was thought that the membrane was only permeable to potassium ions. So people thought it was only permeable to potassium ions. So what they did is they calculated the um, equilibrium potential. So you calculate the equilibrium for these ions. Now, what I want to show you for this is that I'm arbitrarily assigning a resting membrane potential of negative 75 millivolts. That's about average. I mean, give or take. It, do, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm calling my resting membrane potential negative 75 millivolts. So what I want to do from there to find out which way these ions are flowing is I want to do the equilibrium potential for each one. I want to find the equilibrium for each of these ions. And I'm going to do that with, our, with, with, with the standard equation that I used before. And this is just 58 log, the concentration outside over the concentration inside. So the concentration of the ion outside over the concentration of the ion inside uh, inside the cell. And, um, you know, this is just your standard nurse equation here, okay? So I want to then calculate each of these. So I just assign some arbitrary values, the concentration outside being um, 142 over 12 for sodium. So in doing that I got a value of plus 62.24 millivolts. So now I want to say w what's going on here? Which way is this ion moving when I have a resting membrane potential of negative 75 millivolts? Well the sodium ion must be moving into the cell. Okay, The sodium ions must be moving into the cell because they want to be more positive. This, they want to make this cell more positive so it gets closer to the equilibrium potential here for sodium. All right, so those are flowing into the cell. Now I can do the same thing for chloride ions. Okay, I got these chloride ions. Um, so I do the same process, only I use a negative one here in order to get my signs correct. And I wind up with negative 85.67. So again, I compare this negative 85.67 to the negative 75 millivolts. And what I'd find out is that the Cl minus ions or chloride ions must be moving into the cell. Okay, because I need to make this more negative. I need to make the cell more negative here. All right, and that's what I'm going to do. So in order to make it more negative, I have a negatively charged chloride ion. I want to move those negatively charged chloride ions into the cell in order to make the cell more negative, okay, to get it closer to this negative 85, because I want to be negative 85.67 millivolts, not negative 75. So the only way to do that, in the case of the flow of chloride ions, is to move them into the cell, because they're negatively charged. And likewise, that applies up here for the sodium ions. They're positively charged, so I want them to be flowing into the cell, okay, because I want to make this more positive. I want to make the cell more positive. I want, I want to try to bring it closer to plus 62.24 millivolts as, a pol as opposed to this negative 75 millivolts. And then I could just make that same, um, calculate the equilibrium also for um, potassium ions here. So I do the same thing, and these are all millimolar concentrations. So I got 58 log of 4 over 140, and that gives me this negative 89.56. And this is one of the reasons why it, you, you know it's not necessarily um, true that there's that there's other ions being um, flowing at this at to create this equal to create this resting membrane potential because we noticed that if we had only K plus or only potassium ions flowing that we'd have negative almost negative 90 millivolts and that's not what we have we have negative 75 so there must be other things flowing. Anyway, getting back to the equation, well, anyway, we want to make this more negative than it is. So the only way for that to happen is the K plus ions must be moving out of the cell because potassium ions are positively charged and moving a positive charge out is the same. It's kind of like the same thing as adding negative charge. All right, that's kind of how you can think about it. It's almost the same thing as adding negative charge. So you want to move those, you want to move those ions out in order to make the cell more negative and closer to the negative 89.56 millivolts that it wants to be at to so the flow. So to go over one more time, the flow of the sodium ions, because we get this equilibrium potential here of plus 62.24 millivolts, those are going to want to move into the cell. Okay, they're gonna to wanna to move into the cell in comparison to our actual resting membrane potential of negative 75 millivolts. 
So if we go to the chloride ions, their negative 85.67 is the equilibrium value. And the resting membrane potential is negative 75, so we want it to be more negative. Chloride ions flow in. Okay, they flow into the cell, making the cell more negative because they have a negative charge. Potassium, same bit here. Potassium, we have negative 89.56 equilibrium value um, millivolts uh, compared to negative 75 millivolts. Okay, so we want to get more negative. The only way to get it more negative in terms of the flow of, pota of potassium ions is to move potassium ions out of the cell. 